So for shoulder dislocation, to make things easy, I have two rules. My first rule is that any mechanism injury of shoulder joint is equal to its attitude. I'll explain this to you. I'll explain this to you in the coming slides. But please understand my rules. My rules are mechanism of injury is equal to attitude. And the second is that movements opposite to this attitude is not possible. What I mean is the patient's mechanism injury is equal to the attitude he's presenting to you in. What is the attitude? Attitude is whenever a patient walks into the casualty, how is the affected limb presenting to you? Is it in rotation? Is it abducted? So that is the attitude of that patient. Okay. So the mechanism injury in shoulder dislocation is always is equal to the attitude. And the second thing is movements opposite to the attitude will not be possible. Patient cannot perform these. Okay. Now, if you not understood my rules, please wait till the next slide. I'll explain this to you. Everything will become clear. First, let's understand the mechanism of injury of these dislocations. Now, for an anterior shoulder dislocation, the shoulder has to go into abduction and external rotation. So, please think about this. In your day-to-day -day activity, which is the most common movement that you do? Whenever you're yawning, whenever you want to throw a ball, whenever you want to reach for something at height, what do you do? You always abduct and externally rotate your shoulder. So isn't it common that this most common moment is responsible for dislocation? Which is the most common dislocation? Anterior dislocation. Which is the most common movements that we do? Abduction, external rotation. That is why in anterior dislocation, the mechanism of injury is abduction, external rotation. For posterior dislocation, it is adduction, internal rotation. Okay, anterior dislocation, abduction, external rotation, adduction internal rotation for posterior dislocation for inferior dislocation it is hyper abduction that is if your hand goes into hyper abduction then there is a chance that there is an inferior dislocation i hope you understood this this is all i want you to remember now after this i want you to follow my rules now if you know my rules my rules say that mechanism of injury is equal to attitude and anything opposite to the attitude the patient will not be able to perform so in anterior dislocation, what did I tell you was the mechanism of injury? It was abduction, external rotation. Remember, throwing a ball, abduction, external rotation. Now, if the mechanism of injury is abduction, external rotation, even the attitude will be abduction, external rotation. The patient will come to you like this in abduction, external rotation. And what movements are not possible in anterior dislocation? It is the opposite of the attitude. It is the opposite of the mechanism of injury. That is abduction internal rotation is this clear adduction internal rotation will not be possible now let's apply the same rule for posterior dislocation so in posterior dislocation what is the attitude it is adduction internal rotation it is adduction internal rotation what will be the attitude that will also be adduction internal rotation what movements are not possible opposite of the attitude that is abduction external rotation i hope these rules are understood because this will help you solve 90% of the MCQs about shoulder dislocations. Mechanism of injury, attitude, and what are the movements the patient is not able to perform. Now let's talk about anterior dislocation. And I know you're already bored listening to me talk about anterior dislocation. So I've taken the help of the Indian cricket team captain, that is Rohit Sharma. So I'll be explaining to you anterior shoulder dislocation with the help of Rohit Sharma. First, let me explain to you the mechanism of injury. What is the mechanism of injury of anterior shoulder dislocation? It is a movement that is doing here. What is that? His hands are abducted. His hands are abducted and they are externally rotated. They are externally rotated. So this is the mechanism of injury. Now what is the attitude? The attitude is similar to the mechanism of injury. That is his hand is in abduction. His hand is externally rotated. So attitude of the patient is abduction external rotation the patient will come to you something like this his hand will be at the side of his shoulder it will be abducted it will be externally rotated it will be rotated to the other side so this is the attitude a classical attitude of a patient with anterior shoulder dislocation now let's understand the types of anterior shoulder dislocation now this humeral head as it gets dislocated anteriorly you know the mechanism injury it is abduction it is abduction and A stands for axillary nerve injury, B stands for Bryant's test, C stands for Callaway's test, D stands for Dugas test and H stands for Hamilton ruler test. Let's understand each of this in detail. Now let's talk about the first one that is A that stands for axillary nerve injury. 
Now the axillary nerve lies in very close proximity to the shoulder joint. If you have a patient coming to your casualty with a dislocation of elbow, hip, knee, shoulder, all of them have to be reduced immediately because a shoulder, hip, knee, all dislocations are an emergency. Now when it comes to shoulder dislocations, there are some manures which are popular in reducing the shoulder. The first one is the Kotcher's technique. The second one is the Stimson's gravity technique. And the third one is the Hippocrates technique. Most commonly, almost all the time, we use Kotcher's technique. These two techniques are not used nowadays, but sometimes in MCQ exams, they tend to ask these questions. And that is why I'll explain this to you. First, let's understand Kotcher's technique. So recently while watching a match, I came across an episode where Rohit Sharma had a shoulder dislocation and he reduced it on his own. So I thought it was a wonderful way of teaching our students how to reduce a shoulder joint. Although it's not very ideal, but let's use his example here. So he, this is a cautious technique of reducing a shoulder joint. So the first step that you do is you give traction along with counter traction. In the image here, he is not doing a counter traction, just a traction. But the first step is to give traction. The second step is to take the limb into external rotation. So after traction, with traction, you take the limb into external rotation. Now that when that is done, after external rotation, you get the limb close. That is you do adduction, adduction, adduction is done. And after adduction, after you get the limb closer, the last step is to do internal rotation. Let me do that again, traction external rotation, adduction, and then lastly, it is internal rotation. The last step is internal rotation. Now, easy way of remembering this, we know that Rohit Sharma is the captain of the Indian cricket team. So T-E-A-M is an easy way of remembering. T stands for traction, E stands for external rotation, A stands for adduction, and this is where usually students get confused because A stands for adduction, not abduction. M stands for medial rotation, another way of saying internal rotation, medial rotation or also called as internal rotation. So this is the Kotcher's technique. This is the Kotcher's technique of reducing the shoulder. Other types are the Stimson's gravity method. So here you can see the Stimson's gravity method where...